I'm making homemade raw food for the cat that is going to be cheaper than Friskies. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Ferals. These are the main ingredients that I am using. I have 10 pounds of fresh chicken thighs. This is five pounds, and this is five pounds. And I paid $1.29 per pound. I also have a package of chicken hearts. I paid $2.49 a pound for these chicken hearts. We're only going to use some of them. And I have a container of chicken livers. These were $2.49 a pound also, and we're only using some of these. So the first thing I'm going to do is weigh out the chicken hearts and the chicken livers so I have enough for this recipe. Anything left over, I am going to freeze and I'll use it for the next time that I make homemade raw food for the cats. Here's my food scale. I got this for less than $10 at Marshall's. You could also get them pretty cheap on Amazon. I'll put a link to food scales in the description below this video and in the comment section. So I want to weigh out 14 ounces of the chicken hearts. So there's 14 ounces. I am going to put these aside and we'll be using this in the recipe. This is what's left in the package. I am going to put these in a freezer safe container in my freezer. This is Stella. She gets very excited every time I make homemade raw food and she always wants to help me. So here she is. Now we're going to measure out seven ounces of the raw liver. So I buy the liver and the hearts at local ethnic markets. Sometimes it can be very hard to find chicken hearts or chicken livers in a regular supermarket. But if you have a local ethnic market, like a local Asian market, a local Russian market, a local Italian market, that's where I find uh, these organ meats. And if you have a hard time finding them, that's where I would suggest looking for them. So this is 7.2 ounces. The recipe calls for seven ounces of the chicken livers and 14 ounces of the chicken hearts. If you cannot find the chicken hearts, you can add extra taurine. You could add 4,000 milligrams of extra taurine if you can't find the chicken hearts and you can replace that with 14 ounces of the chicken thigh meat. So we're using 14 ounces of chicken hearts and again if you can't find that use 4,000 milligrams of taurine and 14 ounces of the chicken thighs in place of the hearts. But if you can find the hearts definitely find the hearts because organ meats such as hearts and liver are full of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that are really important for your cat. You have to remember when a cat is living in the wild and they're killing their prey, if they're killing a bird or a mouse or whatever they're eating, they're not just eating the muscle meat, they're eating all of the internal organs also because the organs are full of nutrients. So that's why we want to make sure we include organ meats in our recipe. And if you're looking at ingredients in a can of cat food, these should be listed as chicken livers and chicken hearts, but sometimes they're referred to as byproducts. So these would be chicken byproducts because anything that is not muscle meat is a byproduct. So in many cases, when you see the word byproduct on a can of cat food, as long as it specifies where the byproducts are from, there is nothing bad about that. If it says chicken byproducts, you know it's from a chicken and you know it's something other than the muscle meat. And if you think about what a cat eats when it kills a bird, it's not just eating the muscle meat, it's eating all the byproducts, everything including the muscle meat. So that's why it's really important to include organ meats when you make homemade food. The next thing we want to do is get our chicken ready for the grinder. So I have a bowl here. I'll be putting the chicken in this bowl. And the recipe I'm using says to take the skin off half of the chicken. So I'm going to take the skin off this entire package of chicken. And if you have cats that are on the chubby side, you can take the skin off of all of the chicken. You don't want to remove the fat from the chicken because it's important for cats to get a healthy amount of fat in their diet. But if you're trying to reduce the weight of your cats, you could take the skin off of all of the pieces of chicken or you could take the skin off of like 75% of the pieces of chicken. And if you're trying to just maintain weight, it says just to take the skin off of half of the pieces of chicken. So for this recipe, we're gonna take the skin off of half of the pieces. So here's a chicken thigh. It's good to wear gloves for this. 
I just really just pull the skin off like that. There's still a little bit of fat on it, but that's okay. And if you want to trim some of the skin that might not pull off, you could also do that. And if you have a use for this chicken skin, then obviously put it to good use. But we're not going to be using it in this recipe. This recipe says to remove 25% of the bone from these chicken thighs. So each five pound pack has eight pieces of chicken. I just took the skin off of eight pieces of chicken. And so we're going to remove the bones from four of those pieces. And that will be from 25% because I have a total of 16 pieces. And 25% of 16 is four. So here's my chicken thigh, and this is the way that I take the bone out. I am not a chef. This is probably not the professional way to do it. This is just the way that I do it. So I, I put the chicken thigh on this board so that I can see the bone. It's like bone side up. And then I just try to cut along the bone on one side. And then I turn it around, and I try to cut along the bone on the other side. I mean, our goal is just to get the bone out. It doesn't have to be pretty. And then what I'll do is I'll take my knife and just being very careful, I'll put it underneath the bone and work my way up to the top and just kind of cut it free the best that I can. And this is not like a cooking show you see on TV. Nothing has to look pretty. It's all going to be thrown in a grinder for cats. So I just take my knife and kind of work it down the bone to free up as much meat as I can. And then now that we're on the bottom, I just try to cut, cut the rest of the bone free. So there's the bone, that's not too bad. And then I think there's a little bit more here, maybe it's just some tough cartilage. And you can use any knife that you're comfortable using. You can use a large chef's knife if you're comfortable with that. I like to use a utility knife. So I need to do this for three more of these thighs. I just opened the second package of chicken thighs and I'm going to show you how I'm going to cut these into smaller pieces to fit the grinder better. So here's my chicken thigh. Again, it's bone side up and I'm just going to cut one third of it off of the right. And this still has the skin on it and then I'm just going to cut off another chunk on this side. Again, it is more helpful if you have a sharp knife. So these pieces will easily fit into the grinder. So here's all the chicken. It is ready for the grinder. This is the grinder that I will be using today. It is a stand mixer attachment. And I got this at Bed Bath & Beyond almost a year ago. Uh, they were selling it for $99.99, I believe that was the price, and then I had a 20% off coupon, so I got it for around $80. And at the time, I wanted to make small batches of homemade raw food for Ditto, and I could not grind up any bones because he had a very large wound in his mouth, so everything that I fed him had to be really soft and then eventually totally pureed. So that's why I bought this, just so I could do small batches for him. I do have a larger professional butcher series grinder that I normally use when I make homemade raw food for the cats. That grinder costs around $500 and this grinder is much cheaper and it is more accessible for more people so that's why today i am using this one and i'll put a link in the description and in the comment section below this video to where you can also purchase this food grinder so i still keep it in the box i use it then i clean it and i put it right back in the box so this is the grinder attachment 
And the last time I used it, I used a really fine grind on it, but we don't want to do that when we're grinding up bones. We want to use a much coarser grind. So this comes with three grinding blades. Here we have a fine, a medium, and a coarse blade. Normally what I'll do is I'll use the coarse blade first and I'll use the pieces of chicken that don't have bones. Like you know how we took bones out of one fourth of the chicken? So we took bones out of four of the chicken thighs. Normally I would grind those coarsely and then I would change out the blade to like the medium blade and then grind up the pieces with the bones. But today I'm not going to do that. We're just going to use the medium blade for everything. This meat grinder is basically a mini version of the larger meat grinder that I use when I'm making larger portions of cat food. So here's my stand mixer, and this is where the grinding attachment goes. So I'm gonna take this piece off, and I'm just gonna put in the grinding attachment. Make sure the side is loose enough that it fits right in, and then we're gonna tighten it up. And that was easy. I normally use a large aluminum pan to catch the ground meat. So the ground meat will come out here and it will fall into the pan. And then it makes it really easy to mix everything together in a large pan. The first thing that I usually start with are the organ meats because they are the softest. They are the easiest to go through the grinder. And then I follow them up with the firmer pieces of chicken. So I'm gonna start with the chicken livers. Also, you want to make sure that you put your hand here in front of where the meat comes out in case anything splatters. That can happen when you first start grinding, especially with uh, organ meats. So you want to use speed number four. So that's what it looks like. We have the liver on the bottom. It's really liquidy. And then these are what the hearts look like. And you definitely want to use the food pusher to help push the meat through the grinder. Now we're going to work on the rest of the thigh meat. Here's a piece with the bone. Here's all the meat that just went through the grinder. I am going to unplug the mixer and take the grinding attachment off and then we're going to add some more ingredients to this ground meat. I am now adding four raw egg yolks. You don't want to add the egg whites because raw egg whites can block the absorption of some B vitamins in cats, but the yolks are fine. They're very high in nutrients. I'm adding two capsules of taurine. These are 1,000 milligrams of taurine, so I'm adding 2,000 milligrams. So raw meat has a lot of taurine in it, specifically the chicken hearts we put in here and the dark meat of the chicken thighs. Those all have taurine in them. Um, and I've spoken to my vet about this, about do you need to add additional taurine when you're making homemade food with raw meat. He feels that you don't need to add the extra taurine because there is the naturally occurring taurine in the meat. He also acknowledges that there are other vets that definitely think you do need to add the extra taurine. And the recipe I'm using says to add extra taurine. 
Uh, some people feel that it's not harmful to the cats. Other people feel that nobody really knows if it will be harmful in the long run since it is an additional supplement and it's not the naturally occurring taurine. So sometimes it's better to err on the side of caution. This recipe includes it, so I am going to include it also. What I normally do is I just break open a taurine capsule and I sprinkle it on. And I'll do it with the other one also. And this is all going to get mixed together. Adding additional taurine is just basically like having an insurance policy just to make sure that there's enough in the meat for the cats. There normally should be, but some people just like that extra boost. This recipe also calls for 4,000 milligrams of fish oil. I've used several different fish oil supplements. The one I'm currently using is this Grizzly Salmon Plus Omega 369 food supplement for dogs and cats. One pump has 1,000 milligrams, so I'm adding four pumps. I actually added five because some of those were not full pumps. I also make sure that my cats eat fish-based food one day a week to make sure that they're getting a good amount of omega-3s in their diet that way. So I'll feed them some canned sardines, some canned salmon, that kind of food. Now we want 200 milligrams of vitamin B complex. So these are each 100 milligram capsules and I'm gonna open these up and sprinkle these in also. The recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons of light salt for the iodine content, but I use kelp instead, and I'm gonna add two teaspoons of kelp. This is what it looks like. It's like a green powder. This is a half teaspoon, so I'm gonna add four of these. So kelp contains iodine, it also contains some calcium, phosphorus, salt, and potassium. The recipe also calls for 200 IU of vitamin E, and it says to use a powdered form of vitamin E. I have not found a powdered form around here. I know you could buy it online, I haven't done that yet. Other people use this liquid vitamin E, and this is what I've been using. A quarter teaspoon of this is about 400 IU, so I'm probably gonna put in about an eighth of a teaspoon. The next thing I need to do is put my gloves on and get my hands dirty mixing this all up. You obviously can use a spoon or whatever you would like to use to mix it. I just find it's the most efficient to use my hands. So this is the basic homemade cat food. Let's talk about how much this cost to make. So I got 10 pounds of chicken thighs for $1.29 a pound. That was $12.90. I got the liver and hearts for $2.49 a pound. We only used 22 ounces, so we ended up using $3.49 worth of the organ meats. For the eggs, I got my eggs for about $2.99 a dozen. We used four egg yolks, so that would have been about 75 cents. I used 26 cents worth of taurine, 50 cents worth of fish oil, 48 cents worth of vitamin B capsules, 15 cents worth of vitamin E liquid, and 20 cents worth of kelp. So I used a total of $2.34 worth of supplements. When we add together the cost of the chicken, the organ meats, and the supplements, the total is $18.73. So if we divide that by 10, because we made approximately 10 pounds of food, that means it cost us $1.87 a pound. 
and Friskies is currently selling for $2.33 a pound. So we've just saved 46 cents a pound and that's $4.60 for 10 pounds of food. And we know exactly what's in the food and all of the ingredients are much higher quality than what's in a can of typical supermarket brand canned cat food. So although this is the recipe for basic homemade raw cat food, when I make it for my cats, I do like to add some extra ingredients to boost the nutrition and to provide a little bit of extra fiber for their digestion. This is a product that I like to add. It's called Amazing Grass, Amazing Trio. This is barley grass, wheat grass, and alfalfa. The reason why I like to use this is because the cats love eating cat grass. And when they were living outside, they loved eating grass outside. If you observe feral cats living in nature, they love to eat grass, especially if they're not feeling well. And this is a powdered grass supplement. It also has good nutrients for them. It has some vitamin A, some vitamin C, vitamin K, calcium, iron, sodium, and potassium. So while cats are obligate carnivores and they do require animal protein as the main part of their diet, when living in nature, they do get 5%, maybe even 10% of their diet from plant matter. When they eat their prey, they eat the entire contents of the digestive tract, which often contains pre-digested or semi-digested plant material. And they also do chew on plants. That's why a lot of inside cats love to chew on house plants because they have an innate desire to eat greens. It's really important to provide your cat with fresh cat grass. It keeps them away from your house plants, for example. When I was growing up, we had a cat that loved eating lettuce. So this is why I really like to supplement the food that I make with powdered grass. So in this case, I'm gonna be using one scoop and the cost of this scoop would be 90 cents. Obviously, if you can get the supplements on sale or cheaper, if you have a coupon, then it brings the cost even lower. So by adding the greens, it brings the total up to $19.63, which is $1.96 a pound. That's still cheaper than Friskies being sold at $2.33 a pound. I also like to add one or two cups of some kind of vegetables. Sometimes I'll use some canned pureed pumpkin. Other times I'll steam some vegetables and puree them myself. Sometimes I'll very, very finely grind uh, some vegetables. I've done that with zucchini in the past. The cats like that. I've done it with butternut squash. The cats like that. Um, today I have some carrots and I also have some zucchini and I've steamed these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to puree these in a little food processor and then I'm gonna put the pureed vegetables into the cat food. Some people will tell you that you don't need to add any vegetable matter to your cat food because cats are obligate carnivores. Other people say it is good for them because it is good for them to get the additional fiber in their digestive tract, any kind of phytonutrients that might be in the vegetable matter. Basically, opinions are very mixed. Almost everyone you talk to gives you a different opinion. If you read books about homemade cat food that were published through the years, basically the recipes are always changing because every year we're learning new and more things about cats, their bodies, and how they work. So for me, I choose to add these extras. By all means, they are not part of the basic recipe. You don't have to add them. Here are the pureed veggies and I'll be adding these also. Notice how the amount of vegetables I'm using is a very small percentage compared to the amount of meat that is being used. Cats are obligate carnivores and they should be on a meat-based diet. Here's all the food with everything mixed in. So adding the extra vegetables cost me another 78 cents. So it brings my grand total to $20.41. That is $2.04 a pound. Still cheaper than $2.33 a pound. So if I wanted to continue adding extra supplements, which I sometimes do, I still have room in that budget for it to be cheaper than Friskies or any of the supermarket brand canned cat foods. 
So all of this food now has to be frozen. There are several ways you can freeze it. Some people like to freeze this in ice cube trays and then just take out the frozen cubes as needed. I used to take a cookie sheet and put parchment paper on it and then use a cookie scoop to scoop this out into about one ounce scoops. Then I would freeze the scoops on the cookie sheets. Once they were frozen, I would then take them and put them in a Ziploc bag and keep them in my freezer. So I would then portion out about one scoop per cat, sometimes one and a half scoops per cat. I should also mention I did not mix any water into this food, but I do mix water into this food when I serve it to the cats. And if you look at any canned cat food that is being sold, you will always see water as one of the first ingredients. It's usually like the second ingredient. Sometimes it's the first ingredient. Sometimes it's the third ingredient. It's usually up there near the top of the ingredients. And the reason why is because they need water for processing or they just need water in the food in general. I did not add any water to this, but I do add water to it before I serve it. It's just much easier to freeze without the water and it's more condensed right now. So that makes it easier to freeze also. My newest method for freezing homemade raw cat food is by using these paper ice cream containers. This is basically a one pint ice cream container. I purchased a case of these online. Uh, I think it was like $50 for a case of, I don't know if it was like 100 or 200, but I have a lot of them. And what I'll do is I'll just scoop out the homemade food and I'll fill this up and then I'll label it with the date that it was made and then it will go into my freezer. And it has been the best method so far because it's really easy just to fill this up and I could fit a lot more in my freezers because I'm not freezing them on trays, for example. And then all I have to do is defrost this and it will stay good in my refrigerator for up to 48 hours. So uh, that's no problem when I'm feeding for inside cats. Uh, we go through about eight ounces a day. So this lasts up to two days and that has been how I've been freezing this. But again, you can freeze this any way that works for you. So here are all the containers I just filled. Um, nine of them are completely full and then this last one has 5.7 ounces in it. And as you can see, each one has a little bit more than a pound. So this is like one pound 0.7 ounces, one pound 1.6 ounces, one pound 1.4 ounces. And when I add everything together, it comes out to 10 pounds 1.6 ounces. So it's almost exactly 10 pounds of food, which means all of our calculations are correct with regards to dividing the total by 10 to come out to the cost per pound. So I have 10 pounds of homemade raw cat food and it cost me $20.41 and that's with adding extras to it. So it is definitely cheaper to make homemade raw cat food. The only thing that it takes more of is time. You definitely need at least an hour, maybe even two hours of time to make a big batch of food like this. But because you control all of the ingredients and you know what's in the food and exactly what you're feeding the cat, that can definitely be worth it in the long run also. Of course, this recipe can also be modified. You don't always have to use chicken. Sometimes I'll use turkey. Sometimes I'll use 
uh, like Cornish game hens. There's some stores around here that sell quail. Sometimes I'll use quail. Um, I've used rabbit before. Um, you could use any kind of meat that is suitable for a cat to eat. You just have to make some adjustments to the recipe based on the quantity of bone in the foods that you're using. But if you do a search on the internet, you can usually find some information about that as to what those percentages are. And another thing that I like to do for my cats is to give them a little bit more variety than just eating this homemade raw food all the time. Sometimes I will buy them some commercial raw food for snacks. They get some dry food and some canned food. So I do like to give them a bit of a variety to make sure that they're getting all of the vitamins and the minerals that they need. I just wanted to share this recipe with you because with the rising costs of cat food, it is just really crazy. And I'm looking at these prices and I'm thinking, it's not worth it when I can make my own. And we're basing this comparison on some of the cheapest cat food on the market. If we base this comparison on some of the more expensive cat food on the market, you can definitely see where there is a much greater savings. With these prices, it's a really good time for more people to start learning how to make their own homemade cat food. This is my cat food freezer. You can see how these containers fit perfectly. The ones on the top are the ones we just made. And then I also have eight ounce containers and those I've been using also. Thank you for watching this Lucky Pearls video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.